I wanna to talk to you today about something that's very important. The Lord dropped this in my heart last Sunday on my way home from church and God put this message together pretty quickly and it was just, it came so fast. I was like, Lord, okay, this is a word you want to get to your people uh, immediately. And I really believe this is gonna help us get in a position and in alignment to receive what God has for us. Maybe you've been in environments or been at a healing crusade or watched something on television and seen people get healed, and then you've seen other situations where that didn't happen, or maybe you were believing for something and it did not happen the way you thought it would. Well, we need to learn about that. We need to discover the way God works. What does this word tell us about Jesus? And so many times in our life, if we're not careful, we can be that person that kind of watches from a distance and never fully engages with the power of God. You, you see this video that we just watched of a, a group of friends that said, my friend can't stay like this any longer. We're, we're just tired of, he's, he's dying like this. We've got to get him to Jesus. We've watched him perform miracles. And so we've got to make a way to get our friend to Jesus because we know that's where the power is. And they ripped a hole in a roof and lowered this friend down to get as close to Jesus as they could. They were willing to interrupt the plans of the day and to do something radical and persist to get their miracle. I believe that's going to speak to somebody today that you need to be radical. You need to be persistent about some things as you move forward in your relationship with God. Don't have this attitude that if I just stay home or show up when I want to or worship God when I want to, God's going to do it and he's gonna do it the way I want him to. We've got to many times lean in and persist and get in our word and know God and pursue God for him to release the miracle into our lives. Amen? Amen. I want to jump in uh, with this. How many of you have a favorite sports team that you watch on television? We got the Yankees. Throw out some sports teams that you, some are like, no. Okay, uh, who, who, who? I like a team that wins. That's all I'm saying. If you're winning, I'm for you. After that, I like the colors of your jersey. That's about it. Women like to, see, as men are watching the game and they're seeing, you know, who's, who's winning, who's losing, and they're yelling at the, the, the screen. I'm like, who is that? Is he the quarterback? Is he married? Does he have kids? Tell me all about his life. That's what women like to know. Men just want to know who's winning. Uh, how many, come on, throw out some names of sports teams. Giants. Okay, we, we got some good ones in the room. How many of you have watched from home and you have sat in your recliner watching a game and when your team is losing, you're throwing stuff, you're upset, you're mad at the ref, you're like, what are you doing? How could you call a play like that? Are you a stupid moron? What is wrong with you? I would never, how does he not see that? Bleep, 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 blankety blank, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You're just mad. You're just upset. You're just frustrated because you know if I was there, that would not happen. If I was that coach and that ref, they need to get rid of him because any person can see that was the wrong call, right? And then when things start going downhill, then you're really validated. And see, I knew it. They should have called that play. Look what's happening now. And it's so easy for you and I to sit on the sidelines and watch things begin to deteriorate or not go in the way that we want them to and not fully understand we're not engaged on the field. We're not playing the game. We haven't spent the hours on the field in, in, in exercising and preparing for those things. It's easy for you and I to sit on the sidelines and judge something when there are people who are fully invested on the field playing the game, sweating it out. And I want, I, want to, I want to talk about that because sometimes we can actually have that same mentality towards our relationship with God and the way we see him. Why, why did God do it that way? I've been praying this way. And why did it go the other way? And how come it's not working out in my favor? And what happens is we get discouraged and disillusioned, disappointed when things aren't going our way. And so we just start slipping away in our relationship with God. And before we know it, we're on the outside and we're mad at the calls that, the, that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is calling in our lives. We're upset at the way things are going when God is calling us to come all the way in and have that relationship, keep that relationship strong with him 
so that we may not understand everything that the Holy Spirit does, but we know our place is just to celebrate whatever call he wants to make in our lives. Be grateful for whatever call the Holy Spirit plays, because he didn't have to do it. He doesn't have to use you. He doesn't have to use me. He doesn't have to speak to us, but he does. And I want to talk to you today about something that I believe could be keeping us from seeing the miracles happening in our lives. As a matter of fact, we have these cards that we had made up last week. If you've already filled this out, that's great. If not, grab a card that says miracles. Anything is possible. Write down some miracles you're believing God to do. Write down some things you're asking God to do. Be detailed. Could be I'm asking God to heal my family. If you don't have one, would you raise your hand? If you need one, raise your hand. Our ushers can run and get you some. And and make sure you're getting these. You can also get one on your way out if you'd like to, and begin to write down the things that God brings to your mind. Even if I'm speaking today and something comes to your mind, just grab it and write it down and and begin to think about the areas of your life that you are asking God to do a miracle. Some of you have some, keep your hand up if you need one. We're going to grab some for you. If you have some heavy weight issues that you need, some, some major issues that you need a breakthrough in, it could just be something that you might seem insignificant. God cares about all of it. He wants to show his glory in your life in every situation. So let's use our faith. Let's take that step of intentionality and write some things down that we're believing God to do. And so we're going to talk today about miracles. And I want to read something to you in just a moment. Mark chapter six and verse one, go with me. And what we're going to read is how Jesus was a prophet without honor. Jesus was a prophet without honor. And this word honor has several definitions, but here's what it means. It means to give weight, to give value, to esteem, to admire, to respect. These are all words that we use to refer to how we view someone. How we, do we respect them? Do we esteem them? Do we give weight to what they say? Do we admire them, respect them. This is what honor means. And in Mark chapter six and verse one, we see that the Bible says Jesus was unable, somebody say unable, Unable. to do many miracles in his hometown. He was a prophet without honor. Let's read in verse one. It says, Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Verse four, Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. The Bible says he could not do many miracles there or he was unable to do many miracles except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. He was amazed at their lack of faith. He was unable to do many miracles. It's all right. Nobody's, nobody passed out. It's all good. He was unable to do many miracles because of a lack of faith. Now, if you go on and read this, you'll, you'll begin to see that faith and honor go hand in hand. Faith and honor go hand in hand. He was unable to do many miracles. So I want to talk to you today about faith or honor Honor that unlocks miracles in our lives. Honor that will unlock miracles in our lives. I want to pray for us right now. Father, I just thank you for this time that we have together. For those that are watching online, I pray that this word would cut deep into our hearts, change us as we lean in and we learn and we get greater revelation of your word. I pray that it would be an impartation that we'd walk out of here knowing your word deeper in a greater way. Holy Spirit, we lean in. We're ready to hear from you. Change us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's talk about honor that unlocks miracles. Here's some things that you and I can learn from this passage 
that will help us in our own discipleship journey and receive, as we're honoring and receiving other people in our life and the people that Jesus has actually placed in our lives. Number one, here's something we can learn from this passage. The level with which we give honor to a person determines the level with which we receive from that person. The level that we give honor to someone will determine the level that we receive from that person. In other words, it's called reciprocity. Reciprocity in life is inevitable. Contributing and receiving happens daily, whether you and I are aware of it or not. As we give, we receive. As we pour out, God pours back in. And the level with which you encourage someone determines the level to which you are encouraged. That's good. That's good. As you encourage someone else, as you sow encouragement, sow life, sow joy into someone else, that's the level that you will also reap. The same principle applies with honor. Everybody say honor. Everybody feeling good today? You ready to receive? Come on. It's honor. The level with which you honor others determines the level by which you are able to receive from others and receive from Jesus. We see it all in this story. He walked through his hometown and they would just say, isn't that Jesus, the carpenter's son? Isn't that that guy that grew up here? Man, he's just walking around doing well. And they were so familiar with him that Jesus walked through that hometown and the Bible says he wasn't able to do miracles. Here's number two. Here's number two. Honor will unlock the miraculous in your life. Honor will unlock the miraculous in your life. We see in this story, the people in Jesus' hometown understood him to be a man like everybody else. That's just Jesus. He's just like us. And so they missed the divine contribution he had for them because they were unable to see who he was, that he was the word of God. He was the divine. He was God wrapped in flesh, come to this earth. They missed out on greater miracles that he had for them. And this same thing can happen to you and I today if we're not aware of that. We need to understand the same can happen to us in church life when we bring the divine word down to the level of value that we actually attribute to whoever, whoever the messenger is. We're bringing God's word down and we're devaluing it. If you find yourself using the word, oh, that's just so-and-so. That's, oh, that's just so-and-so preaching. I don't need to go today. That's just so-and-so leading worship. I don't know. Oh, that's just so. I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, recently, I went to an event and a conference, and it was two days. And see, here's what's happening. Pastors are getting real smart, okay? People that are doing big events are getting smart. They used to, back in the day, if you went to a conference and there were several leaders and several speakers, you would know who's speaking when. You would know who's speaking what night. You'd be able to say, I have a favorite. I'm going on Thursday night because that's where Friday night, I'm not really interested. Well, they got really wise to us real quick and they decided not to tell us who's preaching when. You just better show up because we humans, we'll just go where and pick and choose whatever we want and we could literally devalue the, the moments that we seem or deem insignificant or think we don't need to hear from that person or that's not somebody that we really enjoy, or I don't know, whatever. And recently I went and I did that. I did that. I was there the first night and I was so excited. And I kind of, it was kind of like, the, you, they just kind of rolled the dice. I didn't know who was going to be speaking, but the person I wanted to hear speak actually was there the first night. And I got everything I needed. It was a word. It was prophetic. It was so powerful. I mean, I got full. And then when I heard who was speaking the second night, I was like, well, you know, I've heard them before. I'm not really interested. I probably should just drive home. I would do better if I just kind of went home and they understand. They, 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 I know that person. It's good. They're not going to be upset. And my family said, no, we need to stay because there's more that we need to be involved and invested in here than just who's speaking. There's relationships, there's people, there's an environment we need to stay. And so I said, you're right, let's stay. And that night that I stayed actually ended up even being better than the one before because I had to get out of what my expectation was where I had just kind of dismissed someone and they brought a word that I needed to hear. And there was an impartation that I needed that I had just disregarded because I had said, oh, that's 
just so and so, or I've heard them before, and we just dismiss people. If we're not careful, we are literally bringing down God's word and devaluing it and not leaning into honor. Come on, somebody. I'm going to get to you today. We, we've got to be careful that you don't devalue, diminish someone's worth in your life. Or what will happen is you, you will begin to limit your ability to receive from those people. You won't have the ability. I'm, I'm trying to help y'all today because let me tell you, your miracle, most of the miracles you need, somebody has the answer. We've had people in our church in the beginning, I think the first year or first year one or year two, there was a family here. And they had just moved out of town. The Lord spoke to them from New Jersey and said, get to Epic Life Church. You need to be here. This is where I've called you. They've been watching online. And they came. And she came up to me in the lobby and said, I, just pray for me. I've got this lump right here on my neck. And I don't know what it is. I've been to the doctor. I went to a nurse practitioner. And they said, don't worry about it. It's just probably some post-nasal drip that's collected there. And it's, it, it'll go away on its own. Don't worry about it. She said, but I am worried about it because it hurts. And and I said, you know what you need to do? You need to go and talk to another member of our church. And he was a doctor. And I said, you need to go, you, an ENT, you need to go talk to him. He's actually working in our kids' ministry, serving. And just, if you get a chance, just kind of mention it to him and maybe make an appointment. She walked up to him and said, Pastor Martha sent me over here to talk to you. I've got this lump. He looked at her and without even thinking, he said, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's cancer. I need to get you in immediately. And so he didn't know her except her name in that one encounter, changed his schedule, got her in immediately, went in and started treatment. She was in, I believe, stage three at the time. And God literally, that one moment of divine miracle. What if she had looked at me and said, oh, Pastor Martha's sweet, but I'm not going to buy, I'm just not. And she had devalued that encounter that she had with me. And that moment, she, she said, I'm going to do whatever I got to do. Even though other doctors had told her that it was nothing, she knew in her spirit, it wasn't just nothing. And she honored what I told her. She went back and shared this with him. And within just a few months, she's on her way to healing. Yes. Come on, see, it's important. This is important that we don't become so familiar with people. Don't get so familiar with the people in your life and the people that lead you or the people in your family. Don't be so familiar that you can't receive from them. Don't limit a person's value to your life because there's other people that hold the miracle. I'm telling you, everything you need, you're probably sitting right next to them and you don't even know it. Your answer is in this room. If God's called you, there's somebody that needs a job and there's somebody in here looking for somebody to hire. I've seen it over and over. Somebody that needs to sell a car. Somebody that's like, Lord, I need a miracle car. There's somebody that needs a lawyer and says, I need somebody. I can't afford one. And somebody's sitting here going, I have a law degree. I'll help you. I'm telling you, there's miracles in this room. We need to value the people that God puts in our lives. Number three, honor is a prerequisite for releasing your faith. Honor is a pre -re prerequisite for releasing faith. We see throughout the four gospels, Jesus says this, your faith has made you well. It was your faith that made you well. This was in response to the people who received an extraordinary miracle from Jesus. He would say your faith. It was your faith that made you well. And we often miss the fact that as Jesus walked by people, it was the ones who valued him. It was the ones who honored him. It was the ones who received him that got their miracle. It wasn't the ones who just said, oh, that's that man. Oh, I don't know who that is. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure who that is. It was the ones that reached out. We saw the video last week of the woman with the issue of blood and how she pressed her way to Jesus to get her miracle. She valued him. She knew he was the healer. She knew he had the miracle that she needed in her life. And she was not about to let any crowd, any religious leader stop her from pressing her way to Jesus. And as you and I honor God as our Lord, as we honor a relationship with Jesus, as you and I see how important it is that there's people placed in our lives to be the miracle, we will unlock the door to the miraculous for faith to operate. 
Let's be very careful in this day and age that we don't bring the extra, no, extraordinary down to the level of ordinary. Be careful that you don't bring the extraordinary down to the level of ordinary and miss the miracles that Jesus has for you. Be careful that you're not sitting in an environment like this. And I don't mean be careful like be full of fear. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying be aware. Be cognizant of the fact that we can miss it. We can miss a moment. I've missed moments before where God spoke to me something and I just disregarded it or kind of pushed it to the side or thought that not even that God was insignificant, but that I was insignificant or that's my emotions speaking to me or that's just me thinking crazy talk. And God, and God wants us to be so tied in to his voice so that we see the people around us as more than just ordinary. The, the worship leaders on this platform, the pastors, the leaders, the dream team leaders, those of the people in this room that are making things happen every week, man, we need to honor them. We need to value them, hold them in esteem. It will make a difference because when you, and pray for them, because when you pray for what is valuable to you, God will begin to even place more people in your life. As you pray for the people that, that hold value, this is so important because a lack of honor hinders miracles. Jesus in his own hometown did no miracles because of their lack of honor. This, I don't know about you, but this shakes me to my core. I could be praying, singing, shouting, dancing, doing all the right things, but because of a lack of honor, because there's an area of my life where I have not been honoring in my family, in my marriage, and that God, I will literally block blessings from flowing in my life. They, ha they had an over-familiarity with Jesus. This is important for us to understand because honor moves away from familiarity and releases the power of God. Dishonor caused unbelief. If you don't honor someone, you don't believe in that person. You don't hate them. You're not going to kick them out. You just don't honor them. You don't hold them in esteem. And so now you have kind of rejected them. And what's happening is it's hindering the power of God in your life. Honor is important. Honor, again, to value, to esteem highly, to view as important. The opposite of honor is dishonor. Dishonoring means to treat with disrespect, to treat as common or ordinary or unimportant or to not value. So when we dishonor God, what we're doing is we're treating the miraculous power with disrespect. If you don't value the miraculous power of God in your life, when God does a miracle, then you'll miss it. And let me tell you something. God can do a miracle however he wants through whoever he wants. Sometimes we get lost in it because that's not what we thought God was going to do. I didn't want God to do it that way. I wanted God to do it this way. And so it didn't come from the voice we wanted it to come from. We get agitated and upset and we disregard it, dishonor it because we thought it was going to come through somebody that had more anointing, that had a bigger name. We thought that, you know, a prophet was going to come in and give me a word. And let me tell you, I went through a season of, in my life 25 years ago. I could not go anywhere without somebody prophesying over my life. I had a bullseye that said prophesy over me. And it, after a while, I loved it. I appreciate it. But after a while, it was like, okay, could you hold the prophecies a little bit? Because I'd like to see some of these things actually come to pass. Thank you. I appreciate it. But what would happen over time, I would just get so familiar and I would just go, oh yeah. I mean, I've been up prophesied over the best. Okay. I'm talking about the best. T.D. Jakes prophesied over me, y'all. Yeah, I got your attention now. I can't remember anything he said. You would think I'd have written it down, but I received it. I've had some of the greatest people on the planet, people that maybe you don't even know, but they are the top. I mean, just they move in miraculous prophetic gifts and they prophesy over me. And then there's been times when I was standing in the lobby after I sang and some little older lady would walk up and she'd say, I just got a word for you. And I would go, oh, here we go. Here's a, here's a parking lot prophet. I bet they train people here not to do that. Where are the leaders that help people understand that, you know, there's an order to this thing? 
You need to have a leader, and I believe that, but I have found more and more, if I devalue or discredit someone that's coming up with a pure heart, that'll just look at me and say, don't quit what you're doing. Keep going. Keep going. You're blessing people you don't even understand. And in that moment, I received it. It didn't have to come from a big name. It didn't have to follow protocol. It was somebody who just, I honored that word. And then afterwards, somebody would say, what did they say? I'm like, they, they just kept me from quitting. I just want you to know that word came at the right time, at the right place. So don't devalue it just because it doesn't come a specific way. You know, there are sometimes, let me read this scripture. Let me read this to you. Second Kings 5. This is, this is a, a great scripture that'll help us. A story tells of a story of a Syrian commander named Naaman. He was very well respected, but he had leprosy. And Naaman's wife had a servant girl who told her if Naaman went to Israel and saw the prophet Elijah, he would be healed. So Naaman went to the king and asked for permission to go. And it says he got a letter. Uh, he got it along with a letter from his king to the king of Israel. And verse six says the letter that he took to the king of Israel read with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and says, am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? When Elisha heard about it, he told the king to send Naaman to him. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him to say, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and so would have I and you would have as well because you here you are a king, kingly, and you show up at somebody's doorstep and they won't even come out to greet you. The person who has your miracle won't even show up at the door and says, oh yeah, from inside, just go down to the river and just dunk yourself seven times. And Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Aren't we just like him? We wanted to be with this lightning bolt and thunder and, and life and drama. That's how I'm going to get a miracle. But the Bible tells us that it might come in a way you are not even thinking, even prepared for some things you might have to overcome, like a little bit of offense, like a little bit of even disrespect on your regard instead of being, you know, missing out on your miracle. And so he, he says, are not the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I just wash in the good water? Why are you sending me to this gross water? And he turned away and he walked off in a rage. Naaman's servants went, so would I. Naaman's, Naaman's servants went to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great things, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? It took some little servant girl. Wow. Go do it. What is your problem? Get over yourself. You're the one that's losing limbs. We're watching you deteriorate and you're worried about who said it and how they said it. Just go get your miracle. You don't have anything else to lose. Wash and be cleansed. So he went and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. His flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all of his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before them and said, now I know that there is no God in the world except in Israel. And I want you to see that if Naaman had expected his miracle to come through the king, it didn't. It came through a man who would not even leave his house. Who wouldn't even get up off the bed? I want you to see that he expected his healing to come through a prophet, but Elijah didn't even come outside to speak to him. Sometimes our expectation needs to come down a little bit in, in the way we think it's going to happen and trust God that it will happen. If he's got to humble me, if he's got to step on me, whatever it takes, if he's got to bring me down a little bit to get the miracle, I'm willing to do whatever it takes because I'm not going to stay outside of the house. I need, sometimes I need somebody to rip off a roof and lower me down to where Jesus is. <laughs> Elisha didn't even come out, but what they wanted him to see that it was God that performed that miracle. 
It was God that did the miracle. Many people miss their miracle because they want it performed a certain way by a specific person. Don't miss your miracle today like that. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. You've got to overcome that, that dishonor that you feel like you're feeling and sensing in your own life. There's leaders in your life, a boss, a spouse, and you feel dishonored. Man, I'm telling you, just keep honoring. You stay in a place of honor. Even when you seem and feel dishonored, you stay honored, honoring of other people. Honor your spouse. Well, they don't deserve it. Well, you don't either, sweetheart. Okay? I don't either. You honor them regardless of how you're treated. That's not the world we live in today. The world we live in today says, if you treat me right, I might cooperate, but I'm going to speak truth to power and I'm going to bring down all the bad people. And I'm going to speak. No, we're missing out on a miracle when we just don't walk according to the way of the word of God. Honor will unlock your miracle. Come on. You believe that today? You don't have to be prayed for by a televangelist on TV. That happened to me one time. I wanted to have, we were married for five years and I wanted to have a baby so bad. I had been in healing lines. I went to a conference, laid on the floor, cried. Nothing was happening, I thought. And I wasn't having a baby. I had all kinds of issues, problems with conceiving. And one day I got home early from work. I'm off my notes now, y'all. I've gone rogue. Okay, I gotta tell you. I got on the phone. Actually, I was, I was at home and I was just sad because it seemed like everybody had a baby. Everybody was pushing strollers. You know, everybody had all the, and where's my baby? It's been five years. I want a child. I was ready. And one day after I had been prayed over by, you know, just in, just, I think I went to a Kenneth Hagin conference one time. I mean, they have more faith there than anywhere on the planet at that time. And I was like, Lord Jesus. And, and, uh, I got home and I'm not going to tell you the name of the, of the evangelist because I'll lose all of you if I tell you, but I'll tell you after church. Y'all come to me. Okay. But I got on, I got, I, I was, I turned on the TV, like the three channels we had in the nineties and, it, and a televangelist came on the screen and he looked at the camera with all dramatic posturing and said, there's a young woman right now. You want a baby. God is saying, if you'll call in, you'll get a miracle. And I was like, oh, it like something quickened, but I wasn't crazy about the televangelist. I didn't like him. I was like, he's too crazy. He's a nut. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and so I'm like, no, it's crazy. So I, I, and some of you would agree if you knew who I was talking about. And so I, I, I was like, no, I'm not calling in. No, I'm, it's a scam. I'm telling you right now, it's a scam. They're going to want money before they even pray for me. It's a scam. I'm broke. I'm not paying for a miracle. This is what's going on in my mind. But, but my, the Holy Spirit was like, just call, just call. So I'm crying like, okay, 1-800. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, it's a scam. It's a scam. I, right now, they're going to ask, the first thing I promise you, they're going to ask me for my address. Because back then, that's all you had. You didn't have an email. Back then, it was like, they're going to call. Then they're going to send me something, and they're going to want money. I'm just telling you right now. That, so they, the, a lady answers the phone. She asked me for my address. See? I knew it. <laughs> See? I knew it. I knew it was going to happen. And then she says, honey, well, how can I pray for you? And I said, well, the evangelist was just on TV, and I told her that he called out a young woman who wanted a baby and had not conceived yet, and, and I'm just believing for a miracle. She said, okay, honey, let me pray for you. She started praying the most anointed, fiery, Holy Ghost prayer. I'll never forget it as long as I live. She prayed that my womb would open and that I would conceive, and that, oh my God. When I hung up that phone, I was crying. She never asked me for money. She didn't ask me for anything. How about that? I was wrong. Is that possible we might just be wrong every once in a while? Our preconceived ideas. And so, so I was like, well, in Jesus' name. And I just felt a little peace, a little bit of hope. I think it was after that we went to a conference. And I remember I was laying on the floor like, Lord Jesus, I just want a baby. Just heal me. I'm just ready for a baby. I was pregnant the whole time and didn't even know it. After that prayer, I began to pray. And God, I'm just... This is what I'm trying to tell you. You just never know how God is going to do something. He's always setting you up for something great. And that's a pretty good story to tell. Amen. I wouldn't have had this story to tell y'all. I think it's pretty good. See, God's trying to give you some testimonies. Yes. 
If you'll honor the way God does things, it might not make sense to you, but he's trying to give you a story to tell where God will get the credit. It'll impact somebody's life and they'll stop dismissing the miraculous in their own life. So honor, honor, value yourself, value your, your, your future spouse. For those of you that are not married yet, value your spouse for the future. Value your body. Val Some of you have not placed honor on who you are. And so you're still doing and living a certain way that's not honoring to your future. Honor your future. <laughs> Honor your life. If you want miracles, it starts with honor. The way you stack the deck with your decisions and the things that you're doing now will set you up for miracles. Honor the leaders in your life. Pastor Dan and I spend a lot of time in the lobby and we love to hang out with people. And, I, and there's other pastors that would say, don't do that because people just get too familiar. Well, I just decided to disregard that because I'm trusting that the people that know us would know not to become too familiar because they're so hungry for a move of God. They would know when, okay, that's just uh, the, the proximity we have, but we know how to honor leaders so that we don't have to slip away because people don't understand honor. We don't have to slip away in the back and go, oh Lord, everything I just preached, nobody heard any of it. Now they're asking me. No, that's not Epic Life Church. Epic Life Church is filled with people who grab and go and they wave and say hello and they give and they tithe. Why? Because they honor. You honor. That doesn't mean you can't come up and speak to us. You know we're in the lobby, but you understand that honor. Don't allow our, the leaders in your life to become so familiar. This works in your job as well. Don't, allow, don't You just let your boss know, okay, this is when we're standing around talking about what we watched last night on TV, and this is when we stop, and now you're the boss, and I honor you. We need to bring honor back to our our world, amen, because the spiritual principle that governs the flow of miracles is honor, and so we see, I don't have time for all this today, but we see this because Nazareth was a little bit different. When Jesus walked through his hometown, he was unable. The Bible says he was unable. I, I began to look up, I was just, I wasn't trying to get involved in semantics. Josh, you probably know what this is like. You're a teacher and a speaker. I was looking for something that would validate what I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me. So I looked up the word unable and I correlated it to the word he was um, not able unable and not able. And yes, they're pretty much the same word, but as I begin to deep dive and go in a little bit deeper, when you look up the word, he was, he was not able. Not able means you don't even have the power to do it. You don't have any power to do it. The Bible doesn't say he was not able. The Bible says he was unable. Unable means no opportunity to do it. He was more than able. He was just looking for the opportunity. He had all the power. He had, Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, in his own house. Jesus was without honor in his hometown. And because these people were dishonoring, they brought about sad consequences. The Bible says he was unable to do mighty works because of their honor, dishonor, unbelief. We're seeing this. All, wow. Because of the people's spirit of dishonor, the miraculous power within Jesus was shut down. I want you to see this today. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. It's a spiritual principle about the flow of miracles and deliverance. The principle is this. Dishonor shuts down the flow of God's mighty works. Again, it wasn't that Jesus could not. It, it was that he would not. He's looking for an environment. He's looking for an opportunity. He's looking for people who will look beyond if they know who he is and they'll reach into the, to the divine power that he has. Jesus saw the need. Jesus had the power. He had the desire, but their miracles were shut down because of their dishonor. One of these words speaks to ability. The other speaks to opportunity. Jesus literally chose to not take the opportunity to heal people. That needs to sit with us because if you and I want to see the mighty works of God in our lives, we got to make sure we are giving honor to whom honor is due. And I'll tell you this, there's so much more that we can talk about. And you can ask yourself today, do I honor the people, the leaders in my life, or do I pick apart everything they say and do? 
Do I, do I honor people in authority? What's my attitude towards government officials, law enforcement officials, the people in my life, my boss? I may not agree with every elected official, with every person in my life, but the office deserves honor. People in positions of authority must be respected and honored. Must be respected and honored. That doesn't mean we let people take advantage of us or abuse us, but that's not what we're even talking about. Do we respect our parents, our spouses? Do we respect the people in our lives? Do I take them for granted? Am I honoring? Your spouse has miracles that you need in your life. Are you honoring them or are you basically finding fault with everything that they say and do? Our family is one of the greatest gifts we have from God. We should be treating them with kindness and honor. Lord, help us. You don't have to agree with everybody. You don't have to agree with someone to honor them. You got to honor them. I know this is hitting hard. I'll say something that'll make us happy. How about that? Okay, let's see. What do I have down? What did I write down? Repent. Um, blocking blessings. What else do I have? Um, you're an idiot. No, I don't have that. Don't block your miracles. And I'll just, I'll just say this, cause this was on my heart this morning. There are so many opportunities that you have to take a step of faith that doesn't cost you really anything. And it's, it's not what could be blocking your blessing. It's what is blocking your blessing. When your leaders come up week after week after week, and we tell you what's happening around here and half of the people show up, when your leaders say growth track is happening, serve, you've got gifts and, and we just disregard it. Oh, I'll get to that. That's dishonor. It's dishonor. When, when, when you, you would, you would expect that to be dishonor in your home. When you tell your children, this is what's best for you. And it doesn't happen when you as a leader are calling on people to respond a certain way and they don't, and they don't tell you why it's dishonor. If you were your boss, if you were the boss at work, you would say the same thing. Many of us have never had maybe a, a high level of a management position, and we don't know what it's like to have people that are following us as we lead, and we've just followers. God wants to raise you up to a higher level. He doesn't want you to just be a follower. He wants you to see at a higher level, a managerial level, so that people are following you. He doesn't want you to stay where you are because you're blocking miracles. You're blocking the blessing that God has for your life. I didn't mean to take this long. I thought I was going to get done because here, here's the good part. Blessing... There's blessings that come when you honor. Here's the good news. Somebody say, finally, thank God. The blessing. In Proverbs 21, 21, honor is associated with riches, life, and wisdom. Wisdom, life, and riches comes with honor. This isn't unusual. Honor is a blessing. It brings a blessing. Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. There it is. When you honor, you open the door to the miraculous. When you walk in righteousness and love, you find more life. You find greater prosperity and honor. You got to be encouraged that all of the successes in your life are not measured by how you start the race, but by how you finish it. Today is the day. It's time for me to honor. God's been speaking to me about this as well. And I'm sure Pastor Dan is going to remind me of this message later today. <laughs> Yet yeah, about 30 minutes, it's going to happen. <laughs> honor. When you begin the journey of kingdom honor, you will see God do miracles in your life. It just starts with one act of obedience, one act of allowing God to remove impurities so that you can develop a servant's heart. God, I want to be someone who honors. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.20 says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Paul says, if you cleanse yourself from dishonor, you'll be restored as a vessel of honor. That's good news today. See, it's God's original design for you to be a vessel of honor, that honor flows through you and honor flows to you. And God prepares you for the greater work that he has for you. Somebody give God the praise today. Some of you today, maybe you feel like, well, honor is a distant memory because I've messed up way too bad. 
I'm the one who caused the divorce. I'm the one who caused my kids to walk out. I've, I've dishonored way. It's just, there's no path back for me. I could have a good life. I could probably start over, but my daughter is just way, I mean, I've just messed up for way too long. I can't, I can't ever see that turning around. Can I tell you, you're blocking the flow of the miraculous in your life. You just keep honoring. There's somebody that's hurt at you and broken and mad. You just keep loving them. You find a way to honor them. Why? Because that's how we make a way for Jesus to show up. Just let the way make it through. He's gonna move. So you gotta make room for the way maker. And the only way you make room for the way maker is you say what the way maker would say. You do what the way maker would do. You open up a portal, a place, a, 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 just a space for God to move instead of operating in dishonor. Well, I knew nothing was going to change. I tried. I tried and I tried. No, 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 no. I'm going to keep honoring. I'm going to keep honoring. I'm going to be a worthy vessel of honor. I'm going to disconnect from dishonor in my life. Some of you are one act of honor away from a pay raise. You are one act of honor away from a miracle flowing in your life. Increase. I'm just telling you what the Bible tells us. You know why? Because God wants to restore you not only to where you were, he wants to give you greater honor. If you feel like you've messed up so bad that it's behind you. No, the way of Jesus, he is the restore. Restoration is the signature of God's divine nature. It's his signature. Restoration is what he signs over your life. If you're willing to lay it all down and say, God, I want the blessings in my life. I don't want to block the blessing. I don't want to just kind of skate through and hold on. And we've been married a few years. Let's just get through it. No, I want to release honor in my life so that I can, I can accept and receive the greatest marriage, the greatest relationship with my family. I'm willing to fight for it. I'll get bloody if I have to. I'll find people that'll help me tear off a roof and come down to it so I can get as close to Jesus as I can because I'm here. Those people honored Jesus. They honored their friend. They could have said, I don't have time for this. I've got other things. I need a miracle too. You want me to stop what I'm doing? But they took a moment and honored. I could go on and on. I, I'm, I just believe that there are many people that in this room, you see that you have been broken. You need a healing. See, this is what God does best. He restores, he heals, he makes new. This is what God does best. He restores, he heals, he makes new. This is what God does best. He restores. Anybody need some restoration in your life? How many of you need God to heal you? How many of you need God to make some things new? This is what God does best. I want to pray for you today. If you'd close your eyes for just a moment, I want to pray for everyone in this room. Some of you, when you first got saved, God planted a dream in your heart. And the reason he planted that dream is because he wanted to give you glimpses of your future. Prophetic vision for where he was taking you. Many of you have felt like you've missed your calling or maybe you even feel delayed from your calling. Today, God can restore you and renew you. He will do it. He'll take a shattered dream, something that you've messed up, and he will make a new one. That's how God is. He restores everything the enemy has stolen. And if you focus on becoming a vessel of honor, nothing and no one can stop you from fulfilling your calling and your destiny. Father, I thank you today for your word that's gone forth to your people. I pray today that we would repent in the areas we need to repent towards leaders or towards a family member, or towards a, a boss, someone in our lives that we have not honored. We've missed moments to allow miraculous things to flow in our lives. Maybe we just didn't see it. Maybe we weren't thinking big enough. Maybe we were weary and, and we were just tired of waiting and we missed out on a moment. I pray God that we would be so close to your presence. We would not miss out on one more moment of the miraculous flowing into our lives. Miracles, you do miracles. I pray today we would not be people who block the flow of miracles coming into our lives. And Father, we just ask, Lord, with just a heart of faith to lift us up, to help us see what you're doing in the unseen realm. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you continue to pray with me for just a moment, 
I wanna pray for anyone in this room that is away from God. You've never, you've never said, I wanna, I wanna get saved. I want Jesus to be in my heart. I wanna live for Him. I wanna serve Him. I wanna know what it's like to be a believer. I want to be a Christian. I don't wanna go the way that I've been going anymore. I need, I need Jesus in my life. I know I've made mistakes and I need somebody to come in and take away those mistakes and give me a brand new start. Can I tell you, that's the restoration that Jesus offers today. The healing that Jesus offers you today. If you're in this room and you would say, I'm far from God. I've never made in the Lord of my life. Or you would say, you know, I, I, I remember as a child or a young person, I, I gave my heart to Christ, but I am not living for Him now. If you are one or two of those, would you lift your hand right now and say, pray for me. I'm asking God to come into my life and save me. Maybe you're saying I'm away from Him. I need to know Him again. I need to get closer to Him. Come on, lift up your hand. Is there anyone in this room that's ready to make a real decision to live for Jesus? Yes. A real decision to live for Jesus, a life of honor so that miraculous things can flow through your life. Amen and amen. I want you to say this out loud. All of us together say, Dear Jesus, thank you today for the opportunity to start fresh in my life. So many times I've missed the mark and I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me for not serving you but today, I lay my life down. I surrender it to you. I give you everything. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me and change me. Holy Spirit, teach me. Lead me and guide me. Today is a new day. I know that I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, somebody give God the praise. Come on, give God the praise. Would you stand to your feet? The miracle of transformation. The miracle of self. Come on, let's keep giving God the praise. The miracle of changed lives. Amen.